So this is the part that we're going to model uh, in this video. If you haven't tried to create the part yourself beforehand, I'd really recommend you trying it because honestly it is quite simple and if you're legit about trying to pass this test then uh, I really think it'd be better if you try it yourself before I show you how I'd do it. Uh, why I say this part is quite simple is because all the dimensions are essentially on one plane, well they are on one plane, uh, which means essentially what you have to do is create one sketch and then extrude that sketch. So it really shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, there's a number of different ways to create this part, but I'll show you the way that I thought was the easiest and the way that I thought was the most logical. So I'll move this to an aside for now. Here's the part that I've created, one that I prepared earlier. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, it really is just one sketch that's been extruded. Uh, so let's see how we do it. So come up and create a new part if you haven't already got a new part file open. The way that I like to approach these problems is by creating a, uh, a constru construction geometry. Sorry. And essentially what I'm going to do is create, firstly create the sketch, uh, create a construction geometry around the sketch, and that'll help me have a starting point, have a reference for when I create these lines and curves uh, as something to dimension to. It'll make more sense when I show you, so if you don't understand exactly what I'm doing now, it'll make more sense when you see what I'm going to do. So we'll create the extruded boss base up here and it doesn't really matter what plane you choose <clears throat> I'm going to choose the front plane so feel free to join me and now I'm going to create a rectangle as my construction geometry so it doesn't really matter what the dimensions are for now because we're going to dimension that ourselves afterwards so create your rectangle and tick and as you can see, these dimensions are A and B, which respond to 81 and 57 millimeters. So we'll add those dimensions in now. Smart dimension to the bottom horizontal is 81, and the vertical is 57. I hope I'm not flying through this too quickly. It's just because I don't want to spend too much time showing you how to sketch because I believe the vast majority of the people watching this video will already know how to create simple sketches. Uh, let's create a construction geometry by right clicking on the vertical and selecting construction geometry. We can do that for multiple lines by holding down control, left clicking on three, con three lines and then turning them all into a construction geometry. Now one of the good things about sketches is it doesn't really matter what order we approach this. How I'm going to do it is start in this corner and slowly work my way around the sketch. Why I'm doing that is because the first few lines are directly are constrained against our new construction geometry. So it, yeah, it'll provide a simpler simpler approach than maybe if you started with a circle and dimensioned everything from that. So create a line and I'm not going to worry too much oh, I didn't click it and select the line. I'm not going to worry too much about the dimensions for now. Just get it roughly where I think looks right. Aware that I'm not it's not auto constraining me to a midpoint. And down. Great. I'm going to hit exit so it doesn't continue. Exit. And now I will start I'll start adding in some dimensions. Smart dimension. Up here. There's 29. Vertical. So the horizontal, sorry, is 5. The angle Excuse me, I have to zoom in. It's 45 degrees.
Uh, and then the other one's nine, uh, 29. If this is too close, and just to check what's constrained and what's not, con what's not constrained, you can left click on a blue entity and just drag it around. And here you can see how the the lines constrained against the uh, the construction geometry, uh, but the blue line, uh, the blue dot, is still unconstrained, so the length can move. Now we can add this radius by creating a circle on the line. Create a circle roughly where it is. You can get it to constrain to the endpoint automatically, so we'll take that. Sorry, it's a bit messy. Here we go. So before I can trim away the entities, I have to be aware that there's another rounded edge in here. How I'm going to fix that is by starting off with this vertical here, which is constrained against the construction geometry, and then connecting it back. I'll show you what I mean. So I create my line down and down. If I don't want it to auto constrain, you can hold down control. So that might help, and then come through here to create. Uh, this will now let me trim away the parts of the circle that I don't want. So come to the Trim Entities tool, click it, and click drag release across the parts that you don't want. Great, it's starting to look a little bit more like what we're trying to get it to, so that's great. And now to create the curve line between here, this is just a sketch fillet. So select your two lines and I believe it's five, five millimeters and great. It's really coming together. Again I apologize if I'm going through this pretty quickly, it's just yeah, hopefully you've done this before and you're just seeing if you did it the same way as I'm doing it. 29 and the height was 19. Okay. Looks great. Let's clean this blue area up a bit. So that 19. Uh, this is 45. Here. And then there's another sketch up here and a flat bit. These two lines are 32. Come on. Excuse me. I'll just delete that. Smart dimension the two horizontals. Is 32. Computer's going pretty slow. Hopefully, you've got a faster computer than I have. Uh, this is 7 millimeters. What else? And this one is 7 millimeters. Great. One more, 45 degrees. See how the construction geometries are really helping with my angles as well? Uh, yeah, I really recommend that in the test you do this method um, instead of just trying to create separate uh, lines, center lines one at a time and ref uh, constructing to that. I think this is a much neater approach. Hopefully you agree. Uh, this is 14. Yeah. 
now it looks like I have to create another circle. So I'll just try and create one that looks about right. Constrain it to there as well. This means I can rotate that around and also the radius changes. It's just constrained to that point. Uh, there's another, looks like there's another straight line, straight line here, given by the 10 degrees. So I'll add one in. Great. And then I'll add my smart dimension as I go. And that is 10 degrees. Once you have a smart dimension in there, you can move it around and change the position on the screen as you go. To make these two, to make the straight line tangent to the circle, hold down shift and select both the circle and the line. Add relation, there we go, and select tangent. This is really coming together. Hope you're as excited as I am. We should be able to now trim away the part of the circle we don't want. Great. And great. And the radius is 19. Just wait for this to stop freaking out. Okay. That does look like we're nearly there, but what are we missing? Uh, the circle part is missing, so we'll add that in now. And that's really easy. Just draw any circle. Hold down control if you don't want the auto constraints. It says 14 diameter, but I think it'll want me. Oh no, yeah, diameter. 14 millimeters tick and then it is 14 14 from the sides so that's 14 and Great, let's have a better look at that now and see what we're looking at. That is That should be our finished sketch and as you can see down the bottom it says that the sketch is fully defined. So that's perfect and that means we can now extrude the sketch out into a three dimensional uh, part. So exit the sketch and it should automatically start to extrude. Command, of feature, command managers come down. If that ever happens to you, hold it and drag it up to these arrows. You can place it anywhere. I prefer the top. And it's starting to extrude. What was the dimension C? It was 43 millimeters. Doesn't matter which direction because it's symmetrical. 43. And great, so that's our finished part. It says we, what we're trying to find is actually the mass of the part. So mass depends on material, so density, and also your volume. Uh, right now we've got the volume worked out, but we also have got to ch uh, change the material uh, to m ensure that it's steel so we get the right density. So you can come up, edit material, right click on material, Edit material and select your AZ1020. Apply. It might change the appearance of the part, and now we should have should be able to uh, determine the mass of the part. So come up view tools mass properties. Uh, and the mass is 939.54 so cross your fingers look at your answers and yeah here we are 939.54 uh, and this is common in the actual exam you should be able to get the part to exactly two decimal places uh, so if you get 
a nice check is that if you get an answer that's not uh, it's not exactly in A, B, C or D it should be either the close one or you might want to go back and check your part to ensure that you do get the exact exact answer and that's especially if you have more time it doesn't really hurt so sorry if I flew through that the more advanced uh, parts the more advanced videos uh, that will follow on from this I'll take it a bit slower but I just didn't want to spend a whole hour or so explaining how to create sketches because hopefully you should already know how to do that.